Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Red World Fan Fork Mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. King Lover. But right now, we gotta talk about King meeting with the military. On the encouragement of Paul Nellen and the Wyatt Phoenix, Steve King has orchestrated a meeting with multiple leading military figures, although supposedly to discuss military readiness given the tense situation with the People's Commonwealth. A subject that bid the General's welcome was something very different than what it was advertised. Barely after the Generals had gotten seated, did King launch into a lengthy tirade about the necessity for military intervention to prevent socialist radicals from overthrowing the government and annexing the country into the Chomsky dictatorship to the east, although hesitant to speak up against their commander-in-chief, at least of all given the fraught circumstances in the Great Lakes. It seemed obvious to all in the room that the idea was not popular. When King had finished his tirade, he gave the journals a seven days a date seven days from now, but then he expected them to secure the Federation, or Confederation. The journals acknowledged the order and bid their farewell to the President, wondering how the heck to comply with such an order. A Spock with a little bit more army XP, which is very nice, even though we're completely out of equipment. Uh, so a couple comments, though. Someone says, this mod needs an Alex Jones path. I completely agree. I think that would be great. I like Alex Jones. He's a funny guy. Uh, Texan Troubles. Someone also asked, does Texas have a unique focus tree? Well, it's a little late to check now. I want to say yes. And obviously this is the American Republic, but I want to say yes. I'm not entirely sure, but I want to say yes. I could be wrong, but we'll see it in another campaign, probably. Uh, someone also says Ventura is a great man that we saw in uh, here. Yeah, Ventura, the Mr. Centrist. And someone says more Red World, please. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but let's see. Uh, someone did say they wanted me to uh, at least show you all of the potential events that happened here. So let's get them all opened up real quick. So I'm not going to read through all these. That would take literally the entire video to do. And my mouth would be dry and really bored. But if you want to about these different events, please go right ahead. The Korean War. Uh, Surinder Okpo Dong. The 52 presidential election. The 53 Iranian coup d'etat, 54 Guatemalan coup d'etat, assassination, assassination of JFK like normal, as well as crisis, uh, 56 presidential election, 60 presidential election, Cuban Missile Crisis, Civil Rights Movement, assassination of Nixon, whoa, whoa, I have a 64 presidential election, alright, and then Treaty of Pennsylvania Avenue, Nandong, uh, Nandong Incident, 68 presidential election, the Southern Compromise, White House or Mental Asylum, Assassination of RFK, of course, Paris Peace Accords, the Apollo 11 Mission, in color, uh, 72 presidential election, Surprise Detente, uh, Attempted Assassination of John M. Ashbrook, Spanish Crisis, Impeachment of John M. Ashbrook, uh, 76 presidential election, Chicago Convention, the 1980 presidential election with colored, I guess, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, 1980's Economic Crisis, Attempted assassination of Ronald Reagan. We have this 84 presidential election. Did he win again? Okay. In color as well. Hey, George H. W. Bush and some other guy. Um, and then with the assassination of Gus Hall. Wow, but that's it. White nationalist purge. Sometimes the only way to solve a problem is to backtrack to before it was a problem. In the surprise of national address, Steve King stated to the nation that the deep state's attempts to subvert a great administration had failed, accusing Paul Nathan and fellow far-right members of the Christian People's Party of being agents of the Hormonite agenda, who would lure him away or astray with false info and promises. Effective immediately, he swore that he would prune his government of, uh, of any and all of the co conspirators, ending his short and an unexpected speech then and there. As pink subs and state police officers alike arrive at the domiciles of radical members of the CC CPP all across the country, the president is receiving praise, however, tepid for doing the right thing. As the ambassador of the People's Commonwealth thanks President King for having come to see reason, it appears that the president saved his mandate by the skin of his teeth. Was any white nationalist extremist from the cabinet? Now, I went back, and now it's August 21st. Um, the, well, the route we chose earlier does actually get us cooed by the IWW, so I don't really want to get cooed yet, but let's say nationals for now, and, and in Aylin, so. Um, so after this one, um, uh, militarize a border? Probably. Open borders are like a fortress with its gates unbarred and its watchtowers empty. An open invitation for enemies to subvert our country. With large commons power on our borders, we can hit two birds with a single stone by deploying our brave military to the border to ensure that no enemy shall enter. Now, I read that one yesterday, but... I want to see if we can actually stay as Steve King, because we've already gone down his route. I don't want to, uh, you know, go down another route that we, since we've already decided to go with Steve King for now. But yes, there is actually a unique focus tree. If you choose to double down and try to coup the government, you get cooed by the socialists. Revolutionary socialists, I might add. Um, let's see, do they actually have a her here? No kind of alliance. IWW. Pita Lindsay? I don't think it was Pita. It was someone else, I think so. But yeah, you do get counter cooed, so if you don't choose the option, so. 
and Steve King signs off on the manifesto. This morning, President Steve King officially signed off on a new party manifesto for the Christian People's Party. The new manifesto codifies the party's dedication to capitalist economics, particularly through an opposition to welfare handouts, regulationism, and restrictive bureaucracy. Additionally, the manifesto outlines the party's views on social issues, denouncing the moral degenerative practices of homosexuality, abortion, drug use, and other practices that are blatantly sinful, based off the words of the Bible. Notably, this new manifesto seems to leave out any reference to the arguably white nationalistic rhetoric that President King utilized during his initial campaign. Regardless, if there were any doubts as to what plans the Christian People's Party has for the Great Lakes, they should now be suitably dispelled. A number of protests have been organized in opposition to this official manifesto, calling a systematic guide to the destruction of democracy. Still, President King and his administration have shown no sign of slowing down. God will return to this country and strike down abortion. A great genocide is going on in their midst. Every day, thousands of innocent lives are snuffed out by merciless doctors swayed by atheist propaganda. That the... Oh, look at that. Uh, uh, that is a scourge of abortion, the murder of innocent children solely for the crime of not being born. To leave this terrible institution around would be an egregious sin, and so it must be outlawed immediately. Hurts our stability, give our monthly population though, so, eh, it's a give and take, I guess. British-Irish disputes? Seems pretty normal to me, but who am I to say? Um, I'm not really sure what we can get here, I guess we'll go with Cass, maybe? Of course, we're still working on the land doctrine. We've got a lot of political power, though. Uh, naval stuff, that really means absolutely nothing to us. Just in case, get some John A. Jensen. Just in case war does break out between us and anyone else here. I'm not sure what the end tree is going to look like here, but we'll see what happens. we we'll get more fascist and national support here, of course. And it's still going down, actually. Huh. Alright. Um, of course, we have American isolation. Uh, business of bureaucracy. Military as a border, which is nice. Defense on court territory is pretty good too. Let's drag down abortion. And keep going with mobile defense. So after this one, prior to native workers. That's not bad. Migrant labor crackdown. Crush civil marriage. Adopt a prosperity gospel. More output and civilian factory construction speed. I kind of like that one. Let's do this one next. Never has there been a greater indicator of faith than wealth. Faith is, is rewarded as God looks graciously upon those that believe and deliver them. Security from needs and wants. These joyous news must be made a part of the Christian People's Party platform so that we may spread these good news to the people. Get more factory output, more civilian factory construction speed. And Archbishop condemns Steve King. Commonwealth of Nations reformed. Huh. We have the Irish salvation. John Leahy? Unity government? Nick Clegg, huh? Alright. Of course, we got them. We got uh, Mr. Putin over there. Prosperity Gospel, thank you very much. God in schools. You get a lot more political power. We lose some research speed, but that's okay. Children need to be taught for the truth. Not just mathematics, but also the divine truth of our Lord and the Creator. God needs to be put back in the school with prayer and classes and Christianity on the curriculum to ensure that a new generation of God-fearing citizens may be raised. Healing from the collapse would be good as well. Radical Minneapolis Economic Plan. Moderate Minneapolis Economic Plan. Oh. Traverse economic plan. Oh. Oh, it would be moderate socials for that. It's traverse city economic plan. Okay, so we have to choose a decision there, which is fine. Um, what else do we have here? Okay, it's probably use a little more manpower. Paul Nakasone. More organization. Offensive is nice, but I'll probably go with organization. Uh, enemy air support goes down. Commando. It's not bad. Uh, Air XP. I mean, I guess. Joan Matthews. I guess we'll get that one. So let's start working on some Air XP, I guess. Becomes a military alliance. All right. God in schools for more political power and consumer goods would be nice. Archbishop condemns Steve King. Following President Steve King's extolling the Protestant prosperity gospel, the Catholic Church in the Great Lakes has officially broken all ties with the Christian People's Party. Following an official de denouncement from Milwaukee's Bish Archbishop, Jerome E. Litzecki. This is merely the latest in a long series of disagreements between the Protestant dominant Christian People's Party and the Catholic Church, with Litzecki having long been critical of almost every policy the King and his party proposed. While Litzecki, grateful to uh, King's administration for enacting the ban on abortion, nearly every other action the current government has drawn the ire of the Archbishop. Although he's not publicly voiced his frustrations until now by standing by the her heretical and misguided prosperity gospel, President King has finally taken things one step too far in the eyes of the Catholic Church, provoking Archbishop Litzetsky into breaking with the typical tradition of Catholic clergymen remaining neutral in political matters. A prosperity gospel is compatible with papal teachings. God in schools and what? God in the Great Lakes would be nice too. Yeah, it's not that strong though. An Hungarian capitalist idol. Priorities native workers. I guess we can do that one next. We get factories, which is nice. Foreign labor are undercutting good, great labor workers. As indifferent business leaders keep bringing them here to cut costs. These job stealing scoundrels have no place in the Great Lakes. We shall enact legislation mandating that employers always prioritize citizens over foreigners to prevent any further undercutting of our workforce. 
Might as well. What do we have over here? Is it guns? Oh, it's fighters. Yeah, we want better fighters. Even though we have like no military factories whatsoever. So, and now better gas as well. I guess drones are. Oh, drones are actual like tactical bombers. All right. All right then. I see it. I see it. Happy 2012, everybody. Hope you're having a great, great year. I guess after this, is there anything on the? Lo oh yeah, we can. Uh, what is this? Re redefine our foreign policy. It's not bad. I guess we try that for slightly more stability. There's nothing else on the left side, though. Despite our membership in the UN, few countries seek to establish serious relations with us so as to not provoke the ire of the West Coast communists. That needs a change. We should pursue a more assertive foreign policy to convince the nations of the world that we are a nation in our own right. The foreign office will be allocated more staff in preparation for a new foreign doctrine. Nice. Keep building ourselves up. And we're actually finally making some melee factories. We got actually quite a few guns. Pretty nice. Hopefully we can make our guys even better, though. Fuel storage, um, excavation, do we really need excavation? No, but whatever. Ethiopian Workers' Party abolished. Oh, okay then. Uh, I would like to save more PP, but we have only 6% world tension. So who's going to kill each other here? Migrant labor crackdown. Immigration reform has been a large part of the Christian People's Party since its formation, with the party official party platform arguing that the currently weakly enforced and minimally regulated immigration laws have left led in far too many immigrants, who have driven wages down and taken jobs that should have rightly gone to the natural-born citizens of the Great Lakes. This afternoon, President Steve King signed off on a bill that aims to drastically reduce the number of immigrants across the border of the Great Lakes. This legislation entails a drastic increase in military presence along the borders, as well as a new system of intensive background checks and a cap on the amount of immigrants legally allowed to enter the country. Additionally, new immigrants will be required to stay in the Great Lakes and show signs of cultural assimilation before they are granted full citizenship. Many have come forth and decried this movement's overly nativistic and anti-democratic, as it draws a clear line on the stand between who is and who isn't truly a citizen of the Great Lakes, and harms the free market by changing the balance of supply and, and, supply and demand for labor. Nevertheless, the Christian People's Party assures everyone that this change will only be a net positive for the country, guaranteeing more jobs and better wages. American business for American workers. And here from the collapse. The Midwest used to be the workshop of the world, but since the collapse, our industry has been neglected and fallen behind. As our government prepares its economic programs, we must make sure that this is done with only the most modern of industry. Old factories shall be refurbished and a training made available for our workers. Hello there. Noam Chomsky, Nomi, 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 Donald Rummy. And VP, or not, I guess not VP, just Kamala Harris. I guess, we, wow, 60 days, oh my gosh, 60 days. Economy laws, construction speed, well, resources, full-time employment, that's not bad. Uh, crush level marriage. God on the Great Lakes, that, this, we could, just, we could just really wait for that one. Reject Canadian hegemony. Align well, the Republic, we cannot enter the Democratic League. I guess we'll start with the Traverse City Economic Plan. The socialist course that we have gone down the last decade has done nothing but eliminate American freedom. The time has come to reverse, of course, and to once more let the loose entrepreneurial spirit of America that is to, sure to make wealth trickle down to us all. And we'll probably do what? Align, uh, occupy Illinois. Ooh. Align independent democracies. Create a faction America's People's Front. U uniting a broken America? Detente with Philadelphia. That's not bad. Or unification. Illinois unification. Senate summit. Oh, we're going to just go straight to war with them. We get cores on them too, we take our territory. I kind of want to see what we can just go fight them. When Americans pursue unification, we'll be forced into, to integrate. Huh. Occupation Authority. A new down for the Great Lakes. Remnants, Occupation Authority. Well, I guess we could try this. Align with the Republic? The dissolution of the U.S. was a mistake. Thankfully, President Bush did what he could to salvage the state of the ship. And to this day, the South has kept the flame lit. We must align with Donald Rumsfeld and pledge ourselves to return to the full when the time is right so that Star Spangled Banner may yet again wave from sea to shining sea. We don't have to do that one, really, actually. What if he just said no and prepare for integration to align the Republic? When the Americans pursue unification, we will be forced to integrate. I don't want to be forced to integrate. I want to save America, so... Ooh, a Midwest Union, uniting a broken America, detente with these guys. Uh, uh, hiring foreign Canadian contractors. I kind of want to go to war with them myself. Yeah, I don't want to prepare for integration of Republican political meddling. Occupy Illinois, the fate of the Commonwealth, retake our territories. I kind of like that one. We're going to lose probably, but we can reject Canadian hegemony. Canada may be a major power today, but that indeed is an issue. To introduce ourselves into the Canadian orbit would be detrimental to our sovereignty. And as a young nation, it would be the most precarious resource, most precious resource. Instead, we want to seek to chart our own course to truly assert our independence as a post-American state. Occupy Illinois. Illinois is a minor republic of best, just waiting to be used as a springboard by one of the most post-American pretenders. Its conquest would open up a soft underbelly to the heartline of our agricultural sector, and thus would be unacceptable. We must establish control over the republic before someone else does as a matter of national security. Absolutely. 
And then we're going to probably align independent democracies. Although the dream of United America or Unified America is dead, it does not mean that we cannot yet build friendships with the other post American states. The Midwest Union could be a capable ally with whom we can stand together against those that seek to turn this dead, dead dream into a nightmare and retake our territory. How can we call ourselves the Great Lakes Confederation when so much of the Great Lakes yet remain under the rule of the failed Northeastern states? We must not rest on our laurels. Only when all the lands of the Great Lakes are under our flag can we once more be worthy of our name. Cool. American Commonwealth, Democratic Republic, State, and Commonwealth. American Republic. Oh, the PSA took out Arizona. Now they're fighting Mexicans, and now these guys are killing each other too, which they're losing, which is fine, whatever. Um, integrate support, probably. Yeah, probably. Well, we'll see what we can do. We do have cores on all these guys. Government knows best. How many divisions they got? Up to six, huh? They don't look like they had anybody here. We'll see what happens, though. Um, I want you to go this way. Peoria? Yeah, surround him if you can. Oh, never mind. There's someone there. Let him around first. Okay, I'll go there. Nice. Hold. We do have seven divisions here, which is nice. Alright, you go to Springfield. Go there. To the, uh, just go to St. Louis, I guess. Just hold him in a place for the most part, really. Oh, there you go. Nice. Oh, Panama, nice. And we got St. Louis. I guess Springfield time, huh? Oh, this is Springfield, huh? Alright, it's fine with us. Get a Peoria if you can. There you go. Hey, we got him. Not bad. Not bad. So to this. I mean, that. I mean, this is technically core land, so it's actually very, very nice for us. Um, but we gotta get a lot more of this too, though. Nice, more divisions. Very, very good. Finally, we got a couple more divisions out. Um, so we're aligning these guys. We'll retake our core territory next, and we could buy out East Dakota. One of the major problems of the Midwest Union is a high debt and curve under the recent administration. While one of our problems is that we do not currently govern the legitimate western reaches of the Great Lakes states. Here's the opportunity for an excellent trade deal, which will pay off some of their debt, and that should restore onto us our rightful western border. Everything else is just a bonus. What are we going this way? Hope hold the line. Our guys are only 12 combos, which is pretty god awful. Like, let's be real here. That's pretty bad. We got plenty of spare guns, though, so this should be okay. So we'll see. I don't know how many divisions they have. They probably have quite a few. Uh, we really need both sides to really just kill each other off as much as possible. So we should be able to push into really Michigan. Get through Indiana. We should be able to, hopefully, but we need more divisions first, obviously. Uh, get some more output. We could really use more output immediately. About East Dakota. Commonwealth, Democratic Republic. Oh, look at that, nice. American Republic. Yeah, these guys are pretty strong right now, so... I want to buy these guys out first, but you never know. Uh, let's buy out East Dakota first, maybe. We have enough equipment here. We need more support equipment, which sucks. We actually have quite a bit of artillery, which is kind of surprising, so... If we move in fast enough, this won't be too much of an issue. That actually a hole here. Especially if we can cover up this area, too, so... Could be wrong about that though, but still. Still building some civvies, still building up more millies. And of course our division combo is not very good, but whatever. Uh, they're all down here though. They're not looking very good either. They do have engineers though, which is not good for us. <sighs> Need a little more tungsten in too. Mexico is pushing back to the Pacific States of America though. Not bad for those guys. Concealment, enemy air support. We don't have any special forces. Even though we're getting closer to 20%. World tension. Hmm. I just have to wait and see. I mean, less enemy air support would be nice. We don't even have any planes. It's only 5%. You guys done training yet? Can you guys actually march in? The problem is, we don't have enough strength yet. I just don't think we have enough strength. Democratic Constitution in Italy? We do need Army XP immediately. And we will have Corsos anyway, so... We gotta wait. So it's okay, just train first. Oh, hello. Oh, there's Libya. No one cares. It's just Libya. New Illinois, huh? Oh, there we go. Now we're 27%. Nice. Good. Now we can really build those military factories much more quickly. Get that extra support equipment. That'll be nice. Light tanks would be nice. I think we need planes first, though. That would be better. Yeah, get East Dakota done. And then retake our territory. And then Commonwealth Occupation Authority. That would be pretty nice, but retake our territory first so we can get the war goals against these these groups. East Dakota bought off. 
Our delegation of Danvers returned triumphant from the mission to the Midwest Union. Having secured a deal for us to purchase East Dakota in exchange for paying off the nation's debts. This deal will naturally burden our economy for some time to come, but it significantly expanded our borders. These new lands bring with them additional population and thus expand our economic base. They also restore the states of Iowa and Michigan to the original borders and giving us an extra chunk of land to boot. This deal has also established a new president of cooperation between the Great Lakes Confederation and the Midwest Union, likely making it easier for our two nations to work together on making other deals going forward. Minnesota and Iowa are complete. Oh, was it not complete before? I thought it was complete. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, East Dakota here. Minnesota. We have a part of North Dakota. Nice. Hurts us a little bit, but honestly, with what we got out of this, it's worth it. We can definitely get at least one more. Union Lincoln's gone in 2013 Democratic Alliance primaries. Following the Democratic Alliance defeat in the constitutional referendum, the elections that followed, many did believe the party's on its final legs, suggesting an inevitable conflict between the liberal and socialist wings. With the failure of the Hortman government to prepare for the Democratic Alliance's future, and then the subsequent failure of a new leader to fully prepare the party for the post-referendum elections, to say the party is fractured is an understatement. Liberals in the party rallied around Army Klobuchar, a moderate liberal politician and disciple of Walter Mondale, leaning towards an ideology of new democracy to combat a growing tide of anti-socialism among the conservative movement. Populists, especially those from Wisconsin and Iowa, have rallied around R Ross Feingold, an heir of the Wellstone tradition and staunch supporter of economic leftism. A dark horse candidate, however, but one with much more support in the establishment is Mark Dayton, briefly president during the crises that rocked the Confederation during its early days, promising a return to farmer labor style politics and a more moderate progressive vision to the left of Hortman and the right of Feingold. Dayton has secured, a, secured himself as a viable candidate among two wings vying for control. I've heard of Klobuchar, so common sense progressivism? Why not? After that, Dayton with Philadelphia, so we're done with that side for now. Uh, corporate policy synthesis? Eh, align. Well, that would have helped earlier, but whatever. Prioritize productivity. Wealth cannot be gained by just sitting around twiddling thumbs. No, it must be worked for by the sweat of one's brow. We'll incentivize greater productivity by cutting a few taxes and removing some unnecessary workers' rights legislation that do nothing but strangle the bold entrepreneurs of a nation. Oh, India's fallen. India's fallen apart too, huh? Oh, it's not that bad, actually. Does India have unique focus tree? Led by Sitaram Yachuri. Eh, yeah, sort of do, I guess. Yeah, they kind of do, yeah. Huh. Never knew India would have a, its own focus tree, but cool. Yeah, we definitely gotta go to war as fast as possible. We do have 15 divisions, though, which is nice. Italian Republic is restored, alright then. If we can move quickly into Chicago, that'd be great. Chicago, Grand Rapids, which is really nice. Lansing, Flint, well, not, maybe not Flint. And Arbor and Detroit would be good to get as fast as possible. Where is that motorized? Cool. Oopsie. There you go. I'm gonna get you. Nice. Because these guys need help, and Bernie's gonna be pretty darn strong. And we can't we won't be able to beat him by ourselves. But the 2013 Republican primaries. Betty DeVos <clears throat> uh, has resigned as leader of the Republican Party and declared she would not stand as a candidate for the 2013 elections, scheduled in a four-year period after the 20 2009 election. DeVos, a controversial Republican leader, has been criticized for allowing the Christian People's Party and the Libertarian Party to grow in size, jeopardizing the Republican Party's position as a major member of the two-party system. Although DeVos is largely disgraced, many still support her policy positions. Chuck Grassley of Iowa has positioned himself as a manning loyalist to the Republican position, claiming he would tell the line between nationalists and libertarians while bringing both into the party. A staunch fiscal conservative from Iowa, many believe or have reservations with Grassley's age and ties to the American Republic, but none can doubt that is commitment to the republicanism. Paul Ryan, a staunch fiscal conservative and another right-wing politician, has advocated for a stronger, more hardline party that could challenge socialism. This controversial freedom plan would revitalize capitalism in the Great Lakes by privatizing large swaths of society. Norm Coleman of Minnesota inserted some of his state's progressivism into his campaign, declaring that the Republican Party needs to be moderate to represent the needs of the DA and libertarians. Norm is a controversial choice, but it symbolizes the modern republicanism that could win the party elections in the future. Bipartisan. Paul Ryan. Heck no. I guess we'll go with Grassley, I guess. I don't know much about him, but okay. I've heard him. I've heard of his name before, though. I like the factory outlet. The scourge of unemployment is one plague in every industrial society, leaving scores of people unable to experience the dignity of good, honest work. The state must step in and offer quality employment for all who, for all who want it. If it worked for Roosevelt, it'll work for us. All right, so that's going to be kind of suicidal, but you know what? We're Americans here. We got to go in and do what we need to. And call it in our ally, too. Awesome. Go to Evansville, go to Indianapolis, go to Fort Wayne, go to Toledo. Keep on trucking. Hey, we found someone here. That's not good. South Bend? Uh, go over there. Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia declared war on the Somali Democratic Republic. Sounds really African to me, but what, what do I know? Hello. You guys hold it then. 
crap. Well, we may, kind of made it to Indiana. I kind of figured this as far as we'd probably get. 6 oh my god, six divisions, that's insane. Just cover the line for now, you just hold, hold, uh, yeah, that's fine. God, if we could go right there, that'd be great. Actually, can you go right here and get these guys off? That'd be really nice if you could. Go here. Go here, too. Nice, go to Toledo, nice. Oh, they're not cut off, god dang it. My god. How damaged are you right now? Nice, good. Beat him up. I'd rather have Indianapolis in this tile up here. Good. Or at least do that. Oh, you're actually getting attacked. Well, that sucks. My bad. Um, a high military command. Might as well do concealment, I guess. Even if, oh my goodness, this sucks. Uh, we're going to lose portions of Michigan. Yeah, fighting these guys is a bad idea. But you have to. You, you quite literally have to. Uh, deploy some soldiers early. We need them out right now. Uh, radar station's okay. Artillery. That's good. I want to go here so we can cut this division off. Kill them off. South Bend, good. So then we can come back up here and not die. If you have to leave Flint, that's fine. 2013 Libertarian Primaries. With Jesse Ventura's term as Libertarian leader coming to an end, he has declined to be nominated for the next election, citing the failures of his party during the chaos of the Confederal referendum. Retreating back into the world of activism, it's unlikely that Ventura will rise to the prominence he once had as leader of the Confederation movement, but none of the Libertarian Party can doubt what he did to increase the party's reach among all political classes. However, Ventura has no clear successors, and the populist wing of the party seems to be fading, with challenges by three other candidates from the numerous wings of the party, but none of Ventura's. Fred Upton, an immoderate Libertarian willing to compromise on economic issues with the DA, was condemned by the establishment, but may increase the party's legitimacy among the two major parties. Michael Barden, Eric, a staunch libertarian thinker associated with anarcho-capitalism, has gained the support of many in the party's establishment, although many doubt his appeal across the political spectrum. Returning to the stage lies Justin Amish, a staunch supporter of the Confederation, the young stalwart of the Libertarian Party, favored among party modernizers. Well, let's go with Amish. I've heard of him more, even though I like some of the other guys, I guess. I don't know. They have funny names. I'm like, okay, why not then? That's how you vote, right? You just vote for the person who has the best name. That's how I vote. Is that right to do? Depends who's asking. You want to retreat and come back in. That's fine with us. Yeah, at least we're in Kentucky. Oh, actually. Oh, uh, even if you go here, you, you can't really cut him off, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, hold. It's fine. Lansing. Pride has productivity. Fight for full employment. Yes. Yes, yes. That's not bad either. Uh, fuel would not be bad to get, but not super necessary right now. Let's get encourage homemade industry. Why well, buy from a bra when you can buy a Great Lake? With some targeted tariffs and some reminders to where people about the inferiority of social goods from the Commonwealth, we can ensure that industry in the Lakes will thrive once more. What are the cows she's like so far? 10,000, wow. We've killed off 35,000, so overall, not too bad. Our divisions aren't as good as I want, want them to be, obviously, but, you know, you got to take what you can get. Don't want to send out them planes yet. Uh, well, actually, maybe. Do the best you can. Um, what am I thinking of? Partial mobilization, you need more, lot, a little bit more world tension, which is not too bad. Oh, we need a lot more of this then. What about one? We have way more guns. That sucks. A little bit of lag. Happy June, everybody. Happy, happy, happy June. Papa June Reno. We could come back down here, but we just don't have enough divisions. Probably the Great Lakes ain't too easy, man. Winning here will help us win here, which will help us win over here, maybe, too. You hold, because I want to send you guys here, too. But, which means we can go here too, and beat him up in Lansing. If we can get to Detroit, that's the ultimate goal right now. You go to Ann Arbor. Immediately. If we, you gotta hold here as best you can, son. Because they're fighting us here. If we take that, now they've been cut off. They've, they have just been cut off. Hold, hold, hold. Hold your butts. Don't lose this tile, man. If we can win here, that'd be great. Hold your butts. Your butts need to be held. Do we have a core on this? Yes, we do. That's good. Yeah, no, you're not allowed to lose here. Take him out of Flint. Get your butts in there. Nice. Good. Oh, you don't need to guard that. 
go in. Uh, you guys can go there too. That's fine. Let's go there too. That's fine. All five of you kill off Detroit. If we lose anywhere else, I don't really care. Uh, well, honestly, this one doesn't really matter too much, honestly. Because we have a river we get hide behind, so that's fine. This one I'm a little more concerned about, but if we could just hurry up and win here, that'd be great, guys. Come on, come on. Get Detroit, get Detroit. Detroit's really good to get. Hey, we got Detroit. Nice. Get rid of that. Oh! Maybe they weren't cut off. Maybe they were. I can't tell at this point. I don't care. Nice. Five for full employment. It's international self-sufficiency. A dependency on other countries is a vital artery that can be cut off by the socialists running us. We should not leave our businesses to the whims of the tyrants in Philadelphia. Everything that can be sourced at home will be sourced at home. By extending our trade barriers and enacting sweeping protectionist laws. We love protectionism when it helps us. And when it doesn't, we don't love it. Which ought to make a lot of sense, but whatever. Can you actually... Why do you... Get out of there. There you go. That's better. Much better. You honestly should be able to win right there. I mean, like... They're pretty darn weak. They're really coming at us, man. They really want Indiana back. They have, like, no equipment, it looks like. Confederation Palestine, huh? Break over that river. That'd be good, 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 good. I'd love to go through here to Fort Wayne, but they have just too many divisions. But we could try. Nice. Now, can you do this? Get a little suicidal here. And go room, room. Because I don't care what's happening anywhere else. To be honest with you. Because that'd be very nice. You need to start losing. That's not good. Can you make it down here in time? No, you cannot. Bro, that sucks. Come on. Don't lose it. God dang it. Oh, yeah. That'll take some stuff, guys. Yeah. Got plenty of Vardy for now. Yeah, we have to hold it on this side. That's fine. I don't want to lose this tile yet because we need, need to make that encirclement here. Come on. Come on. Hold it. Hold it. <sighs> Immediately give in to fight them. If we lose here, that's pretty bad, too. If we lose that division, whatever. To kill all three enemy divisions is pretty nice. Oh, do you have any upgrades? No? Okay, then. You suck. Joseph, Votel, Offensive. Yes. Be a little more aggressive. That's fine. You don't, don't worry about Indy. There you go. You actually still might be able to win there, which is nice, 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 nice. Oh, we got him. Come on. Which is fine. You can retreat if you need to. Even though you're still forcing defense. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Phew. We got him. Not bad so far. Not bad. Oh, it's Canada. Yeah, that's really ugly. Whatever. Uh, bailing out the Midwest. There you go. Cool. We head into their Fort Wayne-ish territory. And then after that one, this one, and then um, the corporate policy synthesis. The businessman is a pinnacle of patriotism. For he rolls up his sleeves and dedicates his life to enriching us all. A more noble spirit is hard to find. Let's meet with those benevolent titans of industry and figure out their needs so that we may secure the, um, the ideal conditions for their work. The 2013 Great Lakes election. Following the chaotic referendum on the Great Lakes Confederation continuing on the democratic path customary to the Great Lakes region, it seems like progress, peace, and liberty shall yet again reign on the American continent under the guidance of the Republic. With the 2013 election arriving, voters have hurried to the polls to vote, and although the two parties of the Democratic Alliance and the Republican Party are the favorites, there's still a possibility for an upset. Now we can do with this stuff, but we're just going to stick with the Christian People's Party, because it seems pretty... Oh, pretty stable for now. We've lost 90,000 people. We've killed off... A third of a million, which is pretty good, honestly. These guys have lost a lot. They just keep attacking. I don't know why. Because Jensen's doing really well. Voto's doing really well. Uh, Bernie Sanders. He's got an open of Navy. A lot of manpower, of course. These guys have a lot more manpower. Uh, a couple divisions, couple divisions. We have, like, the least amount of anybody here. Confederation Palestine is gone. As long as we hold, that's the most important part for us. Like, if we can't, well, then that sucks for us, but still. Like, the goal is just to hold. Hold, hold, hold. Be bold and hold. Until we're attacking Kentucky, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. Hello. Where are your divisions at, son? Of course, we don't have the industrial base, like the, uh, these guys over here, but still. Uh, I'll grab some of that too. That'd be very nice. Very, 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 very nice. UK. Have the... What? Union of Soviet. Wait, when did you go to war with these guys? Putin? What did you do? All right then. Well, they're gone. See ya. I guess. Restore oh, we just restored North Michigan, too. Michigan used to be the heart of American automotive industry, but economic crises and later the socialist coup have finally relegated the status of the past. 
No more. We should have a build in the north of Michigan, an industrial network that will make the communists in Detroit green with envy, showcasing the efficiency of capitalism to our southern neighbors. And Ford's vision. An economy is like a machine, and like a machine, it may only move if the gears and increases are unobstructed. We have built and cut out the socialist red tape, so unfairly imposed upon our businesses now. Uh, every gear in an economy harms with efficiency. Fordism is no longer business practice, but an engine for the prosperity of all the Great Lakes Confederation. And then a line for resource conglomerates. Our soil holds a veritable wellspring of wealth, one that we would be foolish to just leave in the ground. We have the natural resources, and then the Canadian resource conglomerates have the expertise needed to extract them. We can gain a very lucrative agreement by aligning with them. My goodness, they just... They a bunch of crazies. I mean, they attacking like crazy. Uh, actually, you can actually go in here, too. Louisville will be pretty darn nice to get, as they're slowly pushing inside of Ohio, which sucks, but... Oh, well. It's alright. Yeah, these guys are going to definitely stop, be stopped around the mountains, probably. Uh, another general? Jackson? Oh, honestly, probably going to need him. Donald E. Jackson. So they'll build some civvies, some millies, some more guns. It'll be a very good thing to grab, but we'll get there eventually. And since we do that, you guys can go right there. Very nice. Got plenty of political power, though. Better artillery is very nice. Happy 2014, everybody. It's a weird year for everybody. Not as weird as about again 2016, but that's all right. Ooh. Partial mobilization? Yes, please. And we did go to limited conscription. Heard our output, but that's all right. Honestly, can we just can we just do a general attack at this point? Oh, oh, that's really nice. Let's just very good. We could probably, honestly. Can we do that? Can we do well here? I hope so. Oh, we got defeated. That sucks. Well, we're winning overall. Moving into Kentucky, even better. Very nice. Ford's vision is very nice too. I like the winning. The winning is nice. And then they will do crush civil marriages? Maybe. We'll see what happens. Cool. 2014 Winter Olympics. Very, very, very nice. Uh, and let's do it again in Capos, uh, Idyll. The heartland of our sports are the farmers and rural workers. Those that toil honestly under God's blue skies. While faithfulness and cosmopolitanism abounds in the cities, we let us reward those true patriots for their faith and loyalty. Guns? Yes. More guns, please. Guns all day, guns all night. Guns make me happy. Uh, you're not winning here, so you can hold. And you guys can actually go in there too, probably. Yeah, that works. Do we have cores on this? That we should. So we have to do with the resistance and such. Civilian oversight. Eh, that's fine. No local autonomy because we're nationalists. That's okay as well. All right, we gotta shore this line up a little bit more. There you go. That's a little better. Nice. We lost now. 117,000, but we've killed off over half a million. So, actually, our war score participation is 50%. The same exact as this much. This, this group here, too. Wow. If y'all wanted to have a little bit of fun, you could do that and take out Knoxville. Oh, maybe not. How about y'all hold? Now we gotta wait just a little bit longer, which is fine, fine, fine. Oh, and they start attacking us again. Alright then. Thanks, guys. Thanks. We appreciate your dedication to our war effort. Should be able to win here. Look at that. They're literally doing force defense. Oh, they were. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Cleveland's now ours. Oh, we're not going to crush civil marriage just yet. Because now we're going to. Uh, if you want to get down here, that's fine. We can take Knoxville. Uh, crush civil marriage. An insidious subversion of good Christian practice. Civil marriage has become a way to gain the benefits of marriage without being actually wed. We must snuff out this heretical practice so that marriage can be restored to its proper state as a union between a man and a woman in the house of the Lord. Oh, in the house of the Lord. Regimented combat teams. Very nice. We're doing so well. We're doing, a, I'll be honest, we're doing a, a, so much better than I thought we would. Because, we're, we're like, well, we're like four states. We're like half of Michigan. We're all of Wisconsin. Most of Minnesota and Iowa, and that's it. Like, that's literally it. Those four states, they don't seem extremely strong by themselves, which I don't think they really are, but this could be going so much worse. Rapidly kill them all off. Chief of the Navy decides to battle, might as well, I guess. What else are we going to do with the Chief of the Navy? I'd like to go here, though. I won't get here and then cut these guys off here. We'll see. We need more divisions, obviously, but we need more guns. Which we're doing really well on guns, actually. Since we're here, infantry divisions, you know what? How good are we on artillery? Very good. So good. We're going to stack a little bit more artillery, which is going to cost us more men. 
but okay. Steve King holds rallies across Iowa. See, President Steve King uh, uh, embarked on a series of rallies across Iowa over the past week, seeking to thank the rural voters there for their unending support for his government. He started each rally with a fairly standard spiel about how these people played a critical role in bringing about his divine political revolution in the country later in his speeches. He extolled the many virtues of agrarian life and his dedication to the traditional capitalist economics. In converse, he spoke to great lengths about the socialistic corruption inherent to urban living. This particular line of monologue led to some somewhat over controversial statements, something that is not exactly foreign to President King and his criticism of urban living. King mocked the chaotic diversity of urban centers and their propensity to attract unsavory foreigners. As should be expected, these remarks drew a fresh round of criticism to the president, feeling accusations of racism and bigotry that have surrounded him since his original campaign trail. The party that has done its best to downplay these criticisms, when has accused critics of promoting slander and being too close-minded to consider opposing political platforms. Our constituents must guide our policy, not guide our elites. Those god dang son of a gun rockers. And Rutgers, uh, God in the Great Lakes. We have accomplished what we set out to do. From all over the Great Lakes, where people are rediscovering their faith, patriotism. While the specter of communism is not yet gone from our shores, it is certain that it shall vanish shortly under the combined might of our faith. And the faith of our fathers. This is mountains. Oh, this is actually only hills. It's not bad. Let's get to do that. Oh, mountain. If we get here, we can, we can go ping here to here. Or we'll just go here, or just ping right here. So, this will be very, very good. Do we have priority? No, we've mixed here, which is better than. That's pretty bad, but whatever. That we get to get. Surprised we're doing so well with, without air superiority too, but whatever. Better anti-air maybe. Do we even have an anti-air? Yeah, we got six hundred some. That's not bad actually. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Keep making more artillery though. We're out now, which sucks, but whatever. Number by two, so you can fill that up a little bit better. So we go here, we go here, we go here as well. Not bad. Anyone else have upgrades? No. Actually, you're four, six, and two. Religious marriage enshrined. Marriage is nothing but if conducted according to the holy traditions of the Almighty. It is solely a religious practice, even if there are often certain legal and economic benefits that come along with it. For this reason, civil unions are an affront to Christian marriage to begin with, made even worse by the propensity to allow same-sex couples to be bred in the eyes of the state. This sacrilegious practice cannot continue today after receiving support from a coalition of Christian People's Party members and the Republicans. Congress approved a bill that has ended any sort of state recognition of civil unions. Going forward, only the religious marriages between a man and a woman will be recognized by the state, and only these unions will qualify for any sort of economic or political benefits. This has, naturally, drawn controversy, arguing that it's unfair to force non-Christians to engage in Christian traditions, and that barring homosexuals from an act that carries important benefits with it is a blatant discrimination that no person should be subjected to, according to some people. President King and his administration have simply dismissed these protests as an atheistic attempt to infringe upon our sacred values, although this has done little to appease people's frustrations. The defilers of the godly tradition must be punished. Who underscore G in godly? What the heck? <laughs> it's alright. Or is it? Or is it not alright? Okay, so the 2013 election. Although the confederal question has been settled, politics never sleep with the 2013 election right on schedule, the town's coming to define the next four years of politics in the Great Lakes. Let the votes be cast and the people select those who represent them best, which is weird to have because it's only 2014, but alright. Alright then. There's another upright. Didn't they just kill them off already? Or earlier too? Why, do, why does the Republic suck so much? They're not advancing. We're the ones that are advancing. Why, why, why ain't they advancing? Is it because they suck? Maybe. Just maybe. I'm trying to get over here so we can just extend the line around here so we can whack these guys. And then we're going to go right here too. Nice. And get in there so then they have to guard it here too. Oh boy. Nice. All right, if you want to. There we go. There's only six divisions, but you know what? It's better than uh, they're dead than anything else. Nice, you're actually still winning by yourself. Holy crap. Oh, and now they're taking us too. Oh, I reckon to go that way. God in the Great Lakes, 2013 election. Why not? Well, would you look at this? Completely surrounded. Destined to die. VP succeeds. 
I guess this one, the Nationalist Principles Survive. The Nationalist Principles of Steve Daddy King and his Christian People's Party, ensuring relentless assault from enemies and traitors all over the spectrum, has been soundly upheld by the people of the Great Lakes. Now, it's time to continue the crusade to rebuild the Great Lakes on Christian principles, and to begin a new one, choking out socialist traitors once and for all. Just the way God intended it. A little bit too late of time for us to get that one. And that one. Nice. All right, move on back to the left front line, and we know what we'll try general attack. I believe that we might just be able to do it and get her done, but I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. New better here, very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice, very, nice. very, very, very nice. Oh, here's some Mars LV ones. Expert focus limited conscription. This is her output. Oh, even more. What else do I want to do? Shift is unsure. Why not? Jingoistic fever. Rally for social conservatism. More monthly population. Better consumer goods. I like that one. Rally for social conservatism. The values of Christ are the values of King and his government. And we need we make it known that these are the only values that will be tolerated within these new lands. The degeneracy that has engulfed the now shattered American psyche since the 60s will no longer be tolerated. We do be making America whole again. Let's go in. We should be able to win. Actually, we might just be able to win the war now, maybe. If these guys can actually fall apart here, which doesn't look like they are. Like, we'll see, but still. We do have 25 divisions, which is pretty darn nice. After this one, disenfranchised urban voters, jingoistic fervor, sure. As our nation strengthens itself, as we look out towards the continent shattered, the work of traitors whose goals came to fruition decades ago. We must take vengeance for all the terror of the communists and all the other traitors have wrecked upon this once united country, and we must begin preparations for war with our neighbors immediately. Oh, Turkey's going to war now, too. Look at that. Oh, we got Pittsburgh. Well, socialist hellhole, as some might call it. But we've lost many a good men. Even though we've killed off more enemies than the actual American Republic under Donald Rumsfeld, which makes no sense to me, but whatever. Whatever. Yeah, I think these guys are done. Twins, they have probably less divisions than us right now. And now we're fighting the mountains, which sucks, but we're still pushing through Pennsylvania, New York. They lost a lot of manpower. Holy crap. I really didn't think it'd be like this. Now we're going to have a peace deal here. We're going to take probably the majority of stuff. Not going to be a ma mass majority, but probably a good old majority of stuff, so... Well, we're in Virginia, my friends. Of course, West Virginia. New York, even, too. It's not bad. Becoming a trickster, huh? Oh, most of commando as well. And he's still learning. He's level 3, though. That's pretty good. You want speed, you go up that way. Cut off Buffalo. Mechanized offensives. Nice, nice, nice. Shock and all, baby. Yes, yes, yes. go. Build more. There you go. More roads, too. More military factories. It's all good stuff. And for that one, uh, bulwark against socialism. On a continent of leftist tyranny, from the corrupt trade unions of Philadelphia to the lab dogs of Soviet hegemony in LA, the Great Lakes will stand proudly as a bulwark against this red menace. We must take every step to weed out and purge every servant of socialism, both at home and amidst the former Americans we are preparing to liberate. And uh, we are currently liberating. Oh, yeah, we're already halfway through Pennsylvania. That's nice. That's some nice stuff, my friends. Of course, we are running out of equipment. That should be noted that we are running out of equipment just a wee bit. But these pushes that we're doing ain't too bad. Oh, god dang it. Stop it. Well, DC is completely open, so we might as well take it. Hey, we got DC. Look at that. Yay. Not saying that we like it, but whatever. Oh, where's the capital? Oh, Philadelphia, it's not Boston. For some reason, I thought it was Boston. We must be really out of guns then. Oh, no, artillery and anti air. Uh, uh, how's that mechanized? Motorized? Actually, can we put military police on there? No, we cannot. Uh, just put cavalry here. There you go. Save ourselves a few issues here and there. That should put up, up a little bit. Harrisburg, Baltimore will be ours. Very, very nice. Oh, how many divisions does the American Republic have? Honestly, not nearly as many as I thought they would have either. These guys are all so weak. If we can take Philadelphia, please, 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 please. I want to end this successful. This is a successful episode. So much more than I thought it would be. So much more. 
We even have a flipping convoy. We can't make Jack Squat. But I don't know who that guy is. Jack Squat? Does he squat a lot? Does he even lift, bro? Steve King lifts. Allentown? No, is Billy Joel here? Of course, these guys are coming through here, but I'm not too worried about that. Conscription volunteers skyrocket. Although the country maintains a draft reserve should the worst come to pass, it appears that the reserve is increasingly getting super superfluous. As many young Laker men and women have been lining up at our recruitment offices, a number such much, much larger than hitherto seen. Multiple recruiting services have been reporting having issues filling the recruitment papers of these large numbers, while the armed forces are already hard at work making sure that the barracks of the country's military bases have room enough to house everybody. This surge in patriotic science has been attributed to the success of Steve King's administration, which has seen great support in the approval of ladings as of rate, combined with the increased level of saber rattling from the self declared successor states. What is clear is that the people of the Great Lakes want to defend their homes from all foes, foreign and domestic. Maybe we don't need a draft after all, but the urban elites of the Great Lakes, as the backbone of liberal and left wing parties, are a threat to King's continued role. Their support for the socialist Hortman should not go unpunished. And more importantly, their powerful political powers, a significant section of the electorate, must be erased. As it will be. Can you guys actually force the attack here? You know what? Force the attack. We want to end this war now. How did you get more strength here? I don't understand. Oh, they're doing force defense, are they? No, they have a decryption. Oh, they might be actually doing force defense. Yeah, they're doing force defense. They're doing force defense, which means we gotta do force attack, right? Drop them. This is this is extremely brutal. Force to attack, force defense, all this stuff. How did you lose? Why is the American group so bad? I'll send you guys back down here. Jesus Christ, you guys suck. New York, force it. We want New York City. We need it right now. We got it. That's right. We got New York City, and that honestly should be enough. Of course, I guess we need Boston too. But then again, we don't have DC, which is not a core tier. Tile thing of theirs, but uh, Baltimore would be good as well. Montpellier, better gunnerinos, yes, please, arenos. It's a bad idea to convert that now, but that's a okay. Why did you keep coming down here, stupid frontline system? More divisions, nice. Philip John A. Jensen, he's a pretty good general. Better than some of the campaigns I've had before. Straight for Boston, everybody. Straight for Boston. We're going to have a little tea party down there. Over there. Wherever it is. Good. We're going to have Boston soon, which I've been to twice already in my life. Nice. Well, my friends, we got them. Which, I'm going to do the PC off screen. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. As we will. Probably have to end up fighting the American Republic. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great Steve King rest of your day.